This is Jorge, head coach at E3 Training Solutions. The purpose of this video is to help you understand the concept of threshold, clarify some of the different terms used, and explain why it can be useful for your training. So what is threshold? It's defined as the point that must be exceeded to begin producing a given effect or response. In terms of endurance sports, it refers to the idea that if an athlete exceeds a certain point, then the amount of work he or she will be able to do after will be limited. This relates to the work and work rate concepts. What are these? To do any task, it takes us a certain amount of work. When we run, we accomplish a certain amount of work, how far we run. When we complete that work in a certain period of time, this is the work rate, that is, how long we run for. Power and pace are expressions of work rate, how fast or not we accomplish that work. For instance, if an athlete runs one mile at an easy pace, he will spend a certain amount of work to complete that mile. If the same athlete runs the same mile but at a faster pace, it will take the same amount of work but now it will be completed at, fast, at a faster work rate. Hence, though, take roughly the same amount of work, the difference here is the speed, how fast or not the athlete is completing that mile. Therefore, work is how much stuff you do, example miles, and work rate is how fast you do that work. Now, you probably have heard many definitions for threshold. In here we'll focus on the useful ones for your training, such as lactate threshold and the maximum lactate steady state. Ones you should probably ignore are the anaerobic threshold, which is a misleading term, the onset of blood lactate accumulation, which is an arbitrary level that may or may not be meaningful for an athlete, and the aerobic threshold, which is a coined term based on subjective testing. So why so many thresholds? Though lactate is an indirect marker for exercise intensity, scientists have studied lactate as a way to measure to see what happens at different work rates. It's also relatively simple to test, and this allows for a standard way to track these changes. But what is lactate? When we exercise, we utilize fat and carbohydrates for energy production. As intensity increases, we use more carbohydrates, and one of the byproducts of this process is lactate. Lactate is a substance that accumulates in our blood. The harder that we work, the faster it accumulates. Imagine of it as a funnel. If you pour water in it at a slow pace, it will clear without spilling over. One thing to remember is that lactate is not a waste product. Instead, it can be reutilized as fuel by the muscles. If you want to learn more about this, read about the lactate shuttle. So how does it work and when do we achieve a threshold? When we go from resting to running, increasing the speed, the lactate will start accumulated at a faster rate. When we're resting, we are generating lactate, but the clearance occurs fast enough, as you can see on our funnel analogy. As we go to walking, then the lactate is going to start accumulating a little bit more, but then the clearance is still occurring pretty fast. As we start jogging and then running and increasing the pace, then lactate is going to continue to accumulate. When it achieves 1 millimole over liter above your baseline, you have reached your lactate threshold or LT. Millimole is just the way lactate accumulation is measured. For instance, if your lactate baseline is 1 millimole over liter, therefore, as you run and start increasing your speed, as the accumulation reaches 2 millimole, you have reached your lactate threshold. Most athletes are able to exercise at their power or pace at lactate threshold, which may be around 2 to 3 hours. As you keep speeding up, you will eventually reach a second threshold, known as the maximum lactate steady state. This is the higher level of exercise we can achieve while sustaining a steady concentration of lactate on the blood. Therefore, while the funnel is getting full, it's still clearing fast enough that it's not spilling yet. And this matters because there's a relationship between maximum lactate steady state and endurance performance. So maximum lactate state is useful because the higher pace or power at maximum lactate steady state, the better you will perform. It is highly trainable and you can manage your training around this by developing training zones. One thing to remember is that the pace or power maximum lactate steady state is roughly equal to a maximal effort between 50 to 60 minutes depending on your fitness. Past this point, if you keep running speeding up well above your maximum lactate steady state, now you're on the clock, which means you'll have to stop in the near future. This is useful information for your training and racing. In summary, the training that we do relates to work and work rate, lactate is a byproduct of carbohydrate utilization. The lactate threshold occurs at 1 millibob above liter of your baseline. The maximum lactate steady state is the highest level of exercise while maintaining a steady state like accumulation in the blood. 
Knowing your maximum lactic steady state, you can match and manage your training and predict performance. And anytime you exercise above this, your work will be limited. In coming videos, I'll teach you how to test it and how you can relate it to pace and power. For now, thank you.